Thank you for joining and welcome to Globalscape's EFT server tutorial on how to create folder monitoring rules for PGP encryption and file processing. Today, we are going to walk through some basic steps for creating folder monitoring event rules and proper process for defining your conditions. Just a couple things to keep in mind before we get started on this lesson today. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about logically defining the order of events based off the event trigger in time. Also, streamlining your events so that EFT can efficiently process files. And lastly, understanding how EFT handles PGP files and the caveats that come with using folder monitoring. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, let's go ahead and create the event rule. Uh, there's two ways you can accomplish this by right clicking anywhere in the site configuration or actually clicking on the event rule node and selecting new. When you select a new, you're going to have a submenu that pops up and then you can select your event trigger type. We are going to create a folder monitor, so we're going to go ahead and select that. And then the event rule name is just a label, so we'll call this folder monitor. EGP encrypt test. And then you have a description field. Uh, this will come in handy when you want to explain what your event rule is doing in case you have other administrators. So at this time, we'll go ahead and leave that blank. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and set a monitor folder. We're gonna set this to C temp. And you can see here, this condition for a file change does equal to added is always created for folder monitoring event rules. In this example, we actually are going to utilize this condition. So we are going to add another condition on top of this one. In the top left pane, you can notice the selection and options that you can use for file system conditions. So we are going to select file name. So right now we have file change does equal to added and file name does match and we're going to set this to star.pgp. And then we are going to set a copy move action, set this to move, and then we are going to set this to local. And then we're going to leave this as fs path which will keep the originating path and file name and then we are going to set our destination path. Set this to C temp slash temp2. Okay, so let's move on to the next part of this event rule. So we are going to set actually the same conditions that we have defined in the first one, just with some subtle differences. So. Let's go ahead and look at our conditions here. I'm going to select a file change, which automatically highlights that and creates a new line. And I'm also gonna select file name. I'm gonna go down here, change my conditions to added, and then file name does not match star.pgp. All right, so our action for these conditions is going to be the encrypt step. So by default, it's already set to encrypt. If we open this, we can look here, it's using my default key, or if you have more than one key, you can select it from the uh, appropriate list. And then uh, the file to process is going to be FS path, which is going to be the originating path and file name. So we're gonna to wanna to leave that the same. All right, and we'll go ahead and apply that. So right now, our event rule is set and configured to go. So let me explain a little bit about this. The encrypt step is really what makes all of this make sense. Basically, when EFT encrypts a file, it actually removes the file from the source directory, encrypts the file, and then places it back into the monitor directory as a PGP file. When that happens, the event is re-triggered and then compared it against the initial conditions. However, this time, when compared against these initial conditions, they're going to be met and therefore process the file, which is going to move from source to destination and to temp2. 
then the second condition is going to be compared and it's going to be completely ignored because not only is the file gone, but it just does not match. So therefore this thread is not even open for the file. So this just creates more efficiency for the file processing. Okay, so now that we have our event rule created and ready to go, we're going to go to the monitor directory. And then we are going to copy and paste this file into the monitored folder. As you can see, the file is immediately removed. And if we go into the temp2 directory, we should find our encrypted file. As you can see here, testfile.txt.pgp has been added to temp2, which uh, implies our process worked. All right, just to recap a little bit, basically what we've done here is that we've created an event rule that will avoid any type of race conditions and will avoid any type of scenarios where there will be multiple threads open concurrently on the same file so that we can process our data and encrypt our data more efficiently. So this concludes our tutorial for folder monitoring event rules that encrypt data. Thank you for watching.